It is now day 24 of the climbing gym being closed. And I'm getting a little nervous, but at the same time, I'm very hopeful. So we are going to go ahead and resurface the gym, and I'm going to start with two-thirds of it. I've already got some of it done, primed, and texturized. Today, I'm going to text prime and texturize this half, and then I'm going to try to start putting the finishing color coat on the rest of this wall, and then we'll do the clear coat another day. Some of the other things that I've got going on today is I want to make another YouTube video about making wooden climbing holds and the different ways that you can attach those holds to your wall. So keep your eye out for that. It may be out already, so check it out. Some other things that I'm doing is I love wearing bolo ties and I'm going to recreate the rattlesnake disc, which is an artifact that was found in Moundville, Alabama. And I'm gonna make it a small size so you can wear it as a bolo tie. That's gonna be super exciting. I'm gonna be looking for a bus as well. Now, I have six children, so that's eight people total in my family. And if you can imagine living on the road with eight people, that's really, really hard. But there's a possibility that we can do that. There's people that are doing it already, and it seems like they're pretty successful with it. So I'm gonna look, we're gonna go out and look for a bus to convert into what I'm gonna call our life raft. If we have to jump ship, this will be a place for us to jump to and reduce the stress of whether we will be successful or not because we've got that thing, we've got the bus to jump into if everything goes downhill. Let's get going. Got to make a supply run and get some more tape and also had to make a stop for emails and business side stuff. But it's, oh, let me find my keys. Ah, there they are. This is a local Clarksville flavor. You gotta love those local hardware stores. So I was able to find some blue tape made in the USA. Cheaper stuff. Uh, still supposed to be uh, clean removal. We'll see how this works. Made in the USA. And I also found some of this stuff. This looks pretty sweet. UV resistant. I don't know why that would be important. Indoor, outdoor usage. Environmental friendly multi-surface. So I got some of that stuff too, and we'll see how it works. So the technique that I'm using to do the texture here, I'm gonna call it uh, blown sand. I have a homemade sand blower. I got this idea off of a video from the King of Random, 
where they're making a sandblaster. Now this did not work at all for a sandblaster, but what it works really well for, and I don't know if it has to do with the, the diameter or the, the size of the bottle, but it works great for this. You have to hit the trigger in an oscillating fashion because where the sand really comes out is when it this bottle decompresses, it blows that sand out. So you go through and you hit this button like this and it just spreads the sand out, works really well. Another thing when you're doing this, it could be extremely coarse and that sand will come off if you don't lock it in. So you need to have at least two coats of paint over the top of that. And when I say two coats, I'm talking about like a good quality thick paint. If you're using a thin paint, that's fine, but you know that you're gonna have to go over it multiple times, more than two. I normally will do a thick coat of an, a latex paint and then a clear coat, but I have a friend at a paint store that has told me about this really cool paint that I'm gonna try out where we're supposedly don't have to put a clear coat on it for something like this application that we're using here. So we're gonna give that a try. I need to go back through now and lock all of these grains in with the paint that we're using as the primer so we can get that a minimum of two coats to lock in those grains. Wow, what a day. So even with the gym being closed, I didn't leave until 10 o'clock at night. And I didn't even get half of my list done, which can be super frustrating. But take a step back and look at what I've accomplished today. I'm just one guy. And I've done, I've textured all of this surface of the climbing wall and put a second coat over the top of that to lock those grains in, which was not on my list. So I've got to feel pretty good about the day. And sometimes you need to do that. You need to just kind of take a step back. You may make these lists and set some high goals for yourself and you don't always accomplish them, but you need to look at the bigger picture. You need to take a step back and look at the whole thing and realize the good that you are doing and that can really help you progress and put one foot in front of the other sometimes. So that's what I'm doing today. Even though there was a lot that got missed, I think it was actually a really good day. And I'm set up for tomorrow. It's looking good. Now I am going to take some time just for me and carve out this rattlesnake disc or start carving it and just enjoy the night. It is the next day and I've got the paint. I've got some lines on the wall. I'm ready to do some painting and I wanted to share this with you. This paint, have not used it yet, but I've done some research on it. It is the Sherwin-Williams Pro Industrial Pre-Catalyzed Water-Based Epoxy. So it is a one-part epoxy that is supposed to act like a two-part epoxy after it is dry. This stuff is so hard that it says if it if it comes to a full dry after 72 hours, you need to sand it down in order to put another coat onto it. So that sounds like it's a paint that we want. I'm pretty excited about it. Hopefully it works good. Normally I would like to do a test on a volume and see how it works over time, but we don't have time for that. I'm just gonna go with it. Hope that you've enjoyed this video and found it useful. Please share it with your friends that may need to have this information here. Like, subscribe, 
and I will see you next time right here on Climber Dad.